in theory, one way decisions are often made without even realizing it is through what's called cultivation. Let's look at a question here, and I want you to think to yourself what you would answer. What do you think, without doing the research off the top of your head, would be the answer to these two questions? First question, during any given week, what are your chances of being involved in some type of violence? Any type of violence, however you might define it. One in 10, one in 25, one in 75, or one in 100? Most people will pick 1 in 10 or 1 in 25. In reality, more likely, your answer would be 1 in 100. Now, what about this next question? What percent of the population lives in the United States? 40%, 25, 11, or 5%? Many people will say 25 or 11. That's usually the most common. But in reality, 5% of the world's population lives in the United States. Why do we think these things? Why do we expect heavy violence? And why do we assume that a large portion of the world's population lives in the United States? That was a question that George Gerbner had in his mind in 1976. And part of why he so, sort of explored and created the cultivation theory. Now this theory basically centers around the idea of a mean world syndrome. I will connect this to relationships in a second, but just a little background. The mean world syndrome basically means that the more television you watch or the heavier you view TV, the greater chance you will have at experiencing the world as a mean, scary place. Now, that might translate not into cable television, but Netflix binging on certain types of shows and such. So heavy viewers tend to see the world more negatively than light viewers. That's what the cultivation theory kind of looks like, looks at. And your question should be, how might that differ now that there's less traditional television and social media is a major part of it? Well, if you think back to how we communicate via computer-mediated communication, keep in mind that social media is often this stage that we can present ourselves on. So in some cases, we like to present ourselves in the best possible manner or we present ourselves in a very negative manner in order to get support or sympathy from a group. So all of these things are part of the cultivation theory. Social media impacts it, but just in a different way than traditional television. Add to that the fact that we have things like Netflix and Hulu and so on, that it certainly does impact how much television, quote television, we watch. Now, another thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about cultivation is the idea of relationships and their impact. If you think about what you expect in a relationship, what do you think is right or good or appropriate? When you think about that, how often are those decisions based on your own personal viewpoints that you've really consciously thought about? And how many are based on subconscious understanding of what you've seen on TV or saw in a commercial? Now, if you think about it, if you have ever bought red roses for your significant other on Valentine's Day, that is definitely a form of cultivation. Now, if instead you decided to go to a concert or just hang out and not even do Valentine's Day, then maybe you haven't been as cultivated as you might as otherwise have been. So it's basically being moved to think things are right or appropriate just based on what you saw on television. For example, in some of my live classes, I will have them create this picture-perfect road romantic dinner, and almost all of them say, on a beach, in the moonlight, with instrumental music and fancy, fancy food dressed up in beautiful clothes. Almost all of them. <laughs> so why? Why do we say that? Why do we say that that makes things ideally romantic? Now, of course, there are a few that won't say that, but it is pretty common, and more common than anything is the beach scene with the candlelight dinner. That is very popular. So why do we think that? It's because of television. It's because of advertising and what we see and what we have been cultivated to think is right, and that becomes furthermore supported by those around, of us, around us who also think that is right. So how do we get away from this? One, constant critical viewing. Analyze what your perceptions are and check them to make sure they're really yours 
and not someone else's, not something else's. Reduce your uncertainty. Go explore different options. In the example with the romantic dinner, although it's kind of a silly one, try something that you would normally not think is the ideal romantic dinner and see what it feels like. Also, be culturally sensitive. Keep yourself aware that there are other people that experience things differently. There are heavy and light viewers. There are people that use a lot of social media and those that don't use any at all. So keep in mind that there's a need to sort of see the perspective of other people. And just a little plug, study communications in college. This kind of course or any course that looks at mass communication or communication in general and its impact will certainly help because even George Gerbner found when he did multiple studies that the more educated viewers, even the heavier viewers, but that were also more educated, answered more reality questions than television questions, meaning they were able to pick the right answer instead of the one perceived through television. So back to our first two questions. You are actually more likely to be in violence one in a hundred times and not one in 10. Now, why do we feel that? Why do we think we're gonna experience violence? Well, because some of us watch NCIS on Netflix for 17 hours and you go in and expect to see negative conflicting things on a regular basis. Um, and in the second one where we asked how many of the world's population live in the United States? Well, in the United States, we see quite a few television shows and movies and such where we're all very similar, all from the United States. And so we think of it as this big picture of the world centering around the United States. So all of these are important aspects of understanding how you come to believe things about your relationships and why you think they may be true. Be critical about these beliefs before you get into deciding whether something is romantic or appropriate or right.